Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here at the Libertarian National Convention in New Orleans, Louisiana, and really excited to be joined by Chris Karabat today, obviously from this awesome shirt that he's wearing, and the great signage from Smart Cash, smartcash.cc, and Libertarian National Convention. Obviously, I got a lot of exciting business here, but what's really exciting to see Christopher on his own little adventure with the National Convention, bringing his cryptocurrency, and I don't mean his personally, but the one that he's the champion of, into the libertarian movement, into this community here, and he's going to be speaking and sponsoring the Mises Caucus Take Human Action event tomorrow and joining us for the crypto party that we're hosting Sunday night. We have a cryptocurrency committee now as part of the Libertarian National Leadership Organization. That's really exciting to see. I was here in 2016. Crypto was a thing, but it wasn't a presence. This year, it's going to be a presence, and it's really exciting because as libertarians, we want to make the world a happier, more peaceful, cooperative, vibrant place. And we know that when the government is able to print money out of thin air through private banks, private public partnerships, however you want to describe the fiat currency <laughs> racket ripoff scam that allows for so much other government evil to take place, you go, wow, this is, this is critical to the advancement of humanity uh, to be able to displace fiat currency with crypto all over the world. So, Chris, I'm really glad that you're joining us. I'm really glad that this is happening. Uh, before we get into Smart Cash and all of its various competitive advantage advantages, what got you into Smart Cash? What got you into to crypto in the first place? And, and why are you the guy representing your team here at the Libertarian National Convention? Uh, I, I first got into crypto in, in 2013 when I bought my first Bitcoin. I didn't do too much with it then, even though I knew it was going to be a big deal because I had my life to live, my first kid on the way, and life was life. Uh, even then, though, I was very uh, attentive to the Libertarian Party and the movement. I loved freedom, and I loved the, uh, the way that the Libertarian movement was trying to advance freedom in this country and across the world. I, um, in 2017... So how did, how did the conversation happen that, 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 like, okay, you're that guy on the development team, mm -hmm. we're going to send you to the national convention? <laughs> well, I, I've been in IT for years, so I, I deal with the support normally on Smart Cash, helping people with I think, I think we have our share of IT guys in the yeah. libertarian uh -huh. movement in general. <laughs> but uh, I was the one who was either the most passionate about uh, Smart Cash and libertarianism, or... The one they wanted to get out of the office to make me shut up about it. <laughs> yes, so. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I'm not. Uh -huh. I'm trying to figure out if if you're the guy on a cryptocurrency development team who gets sent to talk to the libertarians, if that makes you the the least nerdy or the most nerdy of that group, because we've got two two very interesting demographics there. How how do you make that connection? But I'm, I'm glad you're you're yeah. here and you're doing it. Uh, I would like to say I'm the least nerdy, but the. <laughs> Path of my life thus far would imply the most. <laughs> and so you do you, what your role with with Smartcash is all in the realm of IT. Yeah, so I, I started off back in October and did a little bit of help there. In January, when we launched our Smart Nodes, um, I was very excited about that. And because I'm in IT in the Linux world, I was able to help a whole bunch of people launch their Smart Nodes and get their wallets set up and everything. And and from there, the uh, other people on the Smartcash team invited me in to join them. And um, I had been in IT at a job for 12 years, but being invited into a cryptocurrency is like, how could I say no? And I quit my stable 9 to 5 <laughs> IT job to uh, work for pretend money with people who I've never met based on a handshake and a chat room. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you don't mind, there's there there an interesting little subplot there that you yep. shared with me earlier. Oh. The, the day that you, you made the dis this decision, you mm -hmm. came home to your wife. Yep. Uh, the, the day I told my boss I was quitting to work for a cryptocurrency, I get home, and my wife gives me a positive pregnancy test for my third child. So, <laughs> to the moon or else, all right? The market better start taking off. Okay, but now I, we, I want to explain uh, for, for the audience who's mm -hmm. never heard of Smart Cash. We're, we're going to assume that you've heard of Bitcoin and that you're familiar with the basic concept of mining and limited uh, blocks and the, the, the cap of the total number of, of, of coins or tokens that you can have in a system. Um, in terms of, so we'll start with that. Compared to Bitcoin, basic mechanical functions, how does it stack up? Uh, compared to Bitcoin, uh, Smart Cash has a 55 second block time. So we are trying to be a very quick and responsive cryptocurrency. Our goal is that 
our goal is usage as a currency and waiting 10 minutes for a, tra a confirmation is something that you don't want when you're buying your you know, Skittles at a <laughs> quickie mark. Um, 10 minutes just being generous. I haven't, had a, <laughs> I haven't had a 10 minute Bitcoin transaction in a long time. I think recently they're like, they, that's on 30 now is the standard, right? Like well, that's, if you want to wait for more than one confirmation, you have to. <laughs> so that, that was where we started from. That was our goal is we want to be a business focused, used as a currency, cryptocurrency. Uh, they can do a whole bunch of other stuff with cryptos, but if you can't use it as money, it's not doing anything to help the fight against fiat. So how many total tokens possible? Uh, we have a market cap of 5 billion tokens. The goal was in the end there, if you wanted to buy a cup of coffee, you wouldn't be using 0 .000001 smart cash. Uh, you'll still use 0, .00 something, but... So it's deliberately set up to avoid the unit bias problem of Bitcoin. Yes. you mind if I explain? Go ahead. This, yeah. is, this, is, I, this is one of those end user things I think is important for people to understand that part of the problem with there being only 21 million, correct, mm -hmm. Bitcoin possible, that even already today, you know, and, and Bitcoin's cruising around $6,000, uh, that, that in order to, yes, uh, a, a regular purchase, you're talking about a small decimal. And there's a psychological unit bias against, oh, I got to buy, oh, Bitcoin's too expensive. And you go, for those who are, yes, a Satoshi is a Satoshi is a Satoshi. Mm -hmm. Like you buy, like, you know, you buy not a Bitcoin. You're not trying to buy like a handful of Bitcoins. <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a substance. It doesn't matter, but it, it really does in terms of the practicality when you're communicating about this, Hey, um, will you take Bitcoin or Hey, yeah, what's the price? And this is a really exciting, uh, dynamic that's forward looking that, that Bitcoin may have a significant disadvantage on because they're going to be talking about Satoshi's as in a point, how many zeros, whatever of a Bitcoin mm -hmm. versus so many, smart dollars. So what else? Is there any other specific technical differentiations that we need to, to understand what has been created here? The other big differentiation is the block split. Uh, with Bitcoin, 100% of the block rewards goes to the miners. With smart cash, it's split up, so 70% of the block rewards goes to the community to continue to fund development, community projects, um, and just whatever else we need to do for outreach. So that, that's how the Hive teams, or what we call them, are funded. So we like to be a self-funded cryptocurrency. We're not beholden to outside groups or old school whales or whatever to keep smart cash funded. We are funding ourselves as blocks or mined. And then of that 30% that's left, 15% of that goes to holders in what we call smart rewards. Now smart rewards are given to people who hold smart cash for a period of about 47,000 blocks. And they get a, that 15% is split among all the addresses with at least 1,000 smart in them. So it, it's incentivizing holding, but really what we're trying to do is distribute the currency among the holders to uh, diffuse the impact of the inflation that has to be ongoing. And then we have 10% that goes to incentivize the smart nodes, and then only 5% goes to the miners. So there's a, this reminds me of the system around Dash, where you have a, a governance system where people mm -hmm. are able to vote. How do you compare your system for Dash? Well, with, with Dash, only the master node holders can vote. With Smart Cash, anybody with even 0.1 Smart can vote and have their voice be heard on community projects. Although 0.1 Smart at this point is uh, one penny. About. They're, yeah. they're, they're, cruising, they're it's cruising around. I mean, it's been... The lo I think the lowest it's been recently was seven or eight cents, but it's it's been cruising around ten lately. And it was up. I mean, it hit a couple dollars. Like it had a spike. You had a spike just uh, a few In months January. ago. January. January. Yep. With along with Bitcoin, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So during that whole phase, and that's when we first released the smart node. So mania. And, and this <laughs> is this is where like there really is an interesting proof in the market already for this concept is that you outperformed. Bitcoin over this year by a factor of two to one. Is that correct? Yeah, so when we announced uh, smart nodes early December of last year, we were floating around 500 Satoshi, and right now we have a, a really solid floor of about 1,000 to 1,100 Satoshi. Yeah, and, and the reality is that we're still measuring everything in the cryptosphere mm -hmm. against Bitcoin. Still standard, still king, and, and that's <laughs> fine to like appreciate that and respect that for now. And, and I want to make a little bit about my position clear, because I'm also a fan of Dash. And I have a successful Dash project that, that's happening right now. And I, I think that Smart Cash and Dash are kind of competing 
in, 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 in similar niches. Uh, but either way, I, I want to support every experiment in the crypto space space that has the potential of that long-term success of providing a little legitimate service. And this is where smart cash really has a unique advantage. And, and I want to come back to the, the, the hive mind because that's a, that's a cool way of describing the community around this. But, but first, you're deliberately focused and it's in you know a lot of your literature to mm -hmm. say that we are merchant driven yeah. and and it, it's a little it sounds a little awkward honestly I'm like I'm gonna buy a currency I'm thinking retail like every, you know every, most people think of themselves from a more of a retail perspective but even then if I'm going to use a cryptocurrency in the world today I want one that's merchant focused so that I can go spend it, I can use it in those places. And this is something that you're doing extensively, especially in Brazil. So if you could explain both what that merchant focus means and, and, and why Brazil is an area for development. Uh, we like to be merchant or business driven because without businesses, there's nowhere to actually use the currency, as you just said, outside of I'm going to you know, buy or use TV from you for crypto. Um, or the dark web. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's a viable <laughs> use case. That's an important use case. But for mass adoption, we've already uh, we've already got that covered. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bitcoin actually had that one handled like yeah. reasonably well. <laughs> but but for for mass God adoption, bless you, Ross Ulbricht. We will see us. you outside soon. We're, we're all rooting for you, man. <laughs> but for for mass adoption, you need to have a valid business use for this. And our our goal is to get this in the hands of businesses and merchants, so they can actually use smart cash to do business with their customers. And that is what we feel is necessary for mass adoption to come. I mean, it, it itself is not a sufficient, but it is necessary. And so why Brazil? Uh, Brazil is for a few reasons. Uh, one, a couple of our developers are from Brazil. Uh, so we had uh, locals who were very excited about this on the ground there. And another is we have uh, one of our partners there, uh, CoinBR, or StratumBR, who they're an exchange down there, and they had an interesting uh, lawsuit with banks, and it, that they won. They won the lawsuit, <laughs> but but what really ha what happened is the banks started shutting down their bank accounts because that's you know they have the power to take away the money from you, and then they shut down this guy's mom's bank bank account, and apparently that uh that was that's awesome going motivator. too far. No, it, yeah, that was the funny thing. It's not like it flipped people around <laughs> around her. It flipped. Her, yes, in the most to be one of the most passionate advocates. So, so he and his mom and his whole crew now walk around with T-shirts and say "F the banks" on them. <laughs> and so he has a product in Brazil now. He's working with a couple other companies called we call the Smart Band. And the Smart Band, it's it's pretty reasonable technology. It's just a band you wear RFID. If I prepared for this, I would have had one here to show you. Um, and you can use this at. 85% of the retail locations in Brazil. And wow, you can, wait, you can, you've already hit 85% So because it's interacting with their existing credit card processing exactly. system with an RFID chip? Yep. Wow. So you can load... That's that's a huge test market. That's that's awesome. Oh, we have one here. We do. We have All right, one oh, okay, we're going to get past one from, from off screen. <laughs> Beautiful, all right. So Props, more props, more toys. <laughs> well, this is cool because this is like, this is... So I've been saying for, for, I don't know, maybe a year now, mm -hmm. that, that with, with Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general, mm -hmm. um, we could be just like one killer app away from widespread adoption that kind of takes us to, okay, fiat is gone, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and it's not literally overnight, but in the course of a few months, if, you may, if someone said, hey, we got it, we got the mm -hmm. formula down, and for the average consumer, better, easier, more convenient, boom, Get a card, you know, or you know, an RFID chip in this. You know, I, I I'm I'm weird about wearing stuff. Obviously, I wouldn't, uh, you know, maybe not obviously, but I wouldn't I wouldn't wear this. But I would want a card. But the fact that you could do this, you could put this in a phone, mm -hmm. on a, in a phone, on a phone. I mean, the the, the RFID. Where's the RFID chip in this? It goes right in there. Oh, okay, so it's just it's yeah, tiny. It's just a tiny like, chip. Yeah. It's, okay. It's in there. So the RFID chip's actually. Yeah. Do you want? Can we can we see that? Sure. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. I want all the little pieces. <laughs> but yeah, that's it, so that you can do it with that. And this is yeah. something that where, where if, if this is where the uh, where, where the future is, mm -hmm. if this is what the market demands, cryptocurrency 
is gonna is, is ahead of the banks. Mm -hmm. Like that's really exciting that we're already like there's there, there's just th there are things that are possible with cryptocurrency that that, that are, are possible for banks, but that they would never pursue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got like a, um, a chip, yeah, okay. like like a mini SD chip. Yep. And it would. Okay, oh, can I do this? Yep. All right. Put cool. it in there. And it, it's which way? This way. Either way. It's already right. uh, Actually, start that. Okay, yeah. yeah. The way it fits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Adam, the way it doesn't. Okay, so then this this comes on, and you can yep. see that it's in there. And boom. Yep. That's it. And you can put that in anything. This is just how it's marketing it now. All right. So the next thing, mm -hmm. putting in a form that people are familiar with. It's really easy. You have the smart cards, and I love it's got a screen name on it. It's Affoid. Um, <laughs> I don't. Do we not want to show the number? No, no, that's fine. Doesn't matter. All right. So because that that would I guess you'd have to read. You have to also okay. So so if, if I walk into the store with this, yep. and and I want to buy something, mm -hmm. what happens? I mean, I, I do I, I swipe it or whatever. Like, uh, you're you're the merchant here, I'm the right? Merchant. Yep. Okay. So you've got first thing I you've do got an app on your phone. phone. <laughs> This now this is assuming happen. that this is now software that we're showing you on a phone mm -hmm. that a merchant could use on a phone. Like if yep. you're selling oranges on the side of the road, mm -hmm. just have a phone. Download an app. Yep. You're the merchant. It does all of this. If not, if mm -hmm. you're if you, you there's there's a more console version that would be like a credit card reader in a store. You they they are behind the mm -hmm. counter. They register it. They put it in. They put the in, and yep. so what happens? So you so you, you have to figure out a way. You put yep. the amount in so here. So here's the amount. Here's the app. So I put an amount. Say I'm just going to be cheap here, and it's going to cost you know. One one dollar ninety nine cent. All right, all right. Then I'm going to scan a QR code. Okay, so that's that's the big QR code on the back, and we can okay. just talk more about that later. And we go here, and it goes here, and now has the user put in their PIN, and ah. the PIN is what allows the unlocking of the private key to do this. Okay, so here. I don't know the PIN. Okay. He doesn't, he's he doesn't gonna, know my he's PIN. He's going to pretend so to be me and enter the PIN. I'm going to do the PIN here, and that's the part we're not going to show on camera. Yeah, this is not good. Sorry. And then, so once I put in the pin, the I is the user, so... So then I would say, now. pay now. Yep. And then we have a tip option. I don't know, should I tip you? Go what are you it. charging one ninety nine for? <laughs> for doing this interview? Yes, exactly. All right, well, you're, you're doing it's a pretty good. good job, so I'll give you a tip. And now it's processing. <laughs> and assuming the Wi-Fi here works, there we go. All right, payment approved. Yep. 239 USD. That's so, it. Yep, that's it. And all... Done. And now... Is so, this is this this card just like a paper wallet? I assume you have other features. Yeah. Like so, this is backed up with a smart wallet. I can I can still password log in and accept. Like if I were to lose this card, like so we have a yeah. pin, no one else can spend it if Correct. they don't have the pin. And, and we have a web interface that you as the user can log in on your phone or on your computer, and you can generate multiple cards. Um, so as many as many cards as you want with as many different pins as you want you can limit them by location So there's a you know, GPS on the app So if the phone thinks it's in the wrong country or the wrong county or whatever You won't be able to spend using that card You can limit it to how much smart you want that card to be able to spend in any given day And you can just if you lose it you can just go log in and lock it down And because this is a blockchain which mm -hmm. is still essentially open source Anybody could build their own apps with their own features whatever they want into a second layer or a secondary app to, to create a card like this. Like I, hypothetically, I could look at your, your coding, I could look at your API for free, right? I could look like, download all that. I could create my mm -hmm. own card system, my own software. I could call it the Kokesh, <laughs> Kokesh card and it would be run on smart cash, right? And I'm not saying this is the thing, but yeah. like that's the, the value of this is that it really is that open that anybody can develop it and, and make what the market demands on it, right? Yeah, and as we as we produce more, we're going to be releasing more and more of that code base out there. Right now, it's, it's in what we're calling a beta, so anybody can go up, sign up to the beta and get it. But it's still in very active development at this point. Um, there's going to be an API for both the business and the card end that people can use for their own stuff. Um, so we can hopefully use this more online retailers wherever. We want, we want this to be usable anywhere for anything. Now, I want to ask you one more big question mm -hmm. here before we wrap up because like I said we could be just one killer app away from mm -hmm. you know a, relatively overnight I mean maybe mm -hmm. like a six month transition where that's it and at the end of it hey now we know what the now we know what money is for the, for the <laughs> at least for the next couple hundred years and it's not that yeah what are the odds of it being this and 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 on what timeline do you see Massive adoption of cryptocurrency happening. Well, well, for me, um, you know, as we mentioned earlier, when when I quit my job, um, 
I found out my wife was pregnant with a third child that day. And I think what was really telling for both my wife and I is that that did not make either of us second guess the decision to quit my day job. This was more full on ahead. Uh, Smart Cash itself, I think, is excellently positioned to be a top contender in the crypto space. We're not even a year old yet. Our birth date is 7-Eleven, easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and so in just a couple weeks here, we're going to be one whole year old. And I think we've done great things in that year. But for me, it's about the future for my kids. Um, I want my kids to live in a world where they're not robbed from constantly by, by fiat, where the, mil- where the governments don't go and say, I want to go bomb some other country, so I know you're not going to approve of an increased tax for that, so we're just going to print more money and steal from you. I mean, for, for me, that, that's what crypto is all about. Back in the, in the 1850s, when we were first giving up gold for paper currency, it happened before then, but for in mass, when we gave up, in America at least, gold for paper currency, we didn't really know where that would lead us. We didn't know what fractional reserve banking was. We didn't know what Well, most people still have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had an excuse then. Uh, now we have no excuse, even though it's not like anybody actually knows what it means. But, but now this is our second chance as humanity to take back currency. Because currency is about is people. Currency is not the money that the government gives us. It's about us being able to trade freely with other people without anybody else stopping us. It's about, you know, if you look back in the Middle Ages, everybody had different gold-sized coins, but gold was gold, so anybody could use anybody's gold coin from everyone they knew what it meant. And now we don't have that. We don't know what the exchange rate is on any given day between even the major currencies, much less the minor ones. But with crypto, crypto, we can take back our money from the governments, from the banks, and we can be in control of our destiny again. Because when other people value things for us, we give up control of them. We can now value things for ourselves. That's really beautiful, Chris. You know, there's something in there, the way you said it, like that that money has become dehumanized. And as as much as this is the next high-tech revolution, innovation, Mm -hmm. whatever, it is the rehumanization of money. And I'm really excited to know that there are people like you driving this. Chris, any, any last thoughts you want to share with our audience? I, I hope that you'll check out smartcash.cc. Go sign up for a card at card.smartcash.cc. If you are accepting any sort of payments for anything, go to business.smartcash.cc and sign up for the business side there. Um, and from that, you know, join us on discord.smartcash.cc. I am there every time I'm not here. So you can find me anytime, ping me, say hi, and I hope to see you in our community soon. Beautiful. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you.